The energy released in the 2001 collapse of New York's Twin Towers was incredible. Some people saw the images and felt that there had to be explosives going off in order to produce effects like this. As one writer asked, does this look like a gravitational collapse to you? However, an important physics principle explains why these collapses were so energetic. Whenever you raise a mass against gravity, it requires energy. At the top, that energy becomes stored as gravitational potential energy. And whenever a mass comes back down, the energy is released as the energy of motion, or kinetic energy. If you bike down a hill, you speed up. Your potential energy is gradually turning into kinetic energy. When the Twin Towers were built in the early 70s, fuel needed to be burned in order to hoist the construction materials into place. The higher a column was lifted, the more potential energy it was given. All of this energy was held in the buildings for decades. How much energy? Here's where it gets interesting. A conservative estimate calculates the potential energy of each tower at 480,600 megajoules. This large, abstract number can be converted to a more meaningful unit, TNT equivalent, which expresses how much TNT would need to be detonated to release the same amount of energy. The figure works out to 115 tons of TNT for each tower. That's about 1 130th the energy released by the Hiroshima atomic bomb, just from the building materials of each tower coming down from their heights. Conspiracy believers feel as though explosives needed to be in the buildings to produce these spectacular scenes. But the energy was already there. And even though gravity initially directed the released energy downwards, materials could also be ejected to the side. This simple demonstration shows one such mechanism. So, when we take into account the release of the incredible amount of potential energy stored in the Twin Towers, yes, in fact, this does look like a gravitational collapse. 